Oh, good okay. afternoon, Métis Nation. Welcome again, and all those who are watching us as we're being live streamed via the Back to Batosh Days.ca and the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan Facebook page. And a welcome once again to our afternoon of uh, a lot of events that we're going to be doing today. A very packed day. Once again, my name is Chris Sika, coming to you live and in person from my kitchen in the lovely Fairhaven neighborhood of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And once again, I'm very honored and pleased to be joined this afternoon by our co-MC for this weekend, the minister responsible for Batosh, Sherry McLennan. Sherry, have a, having a great day this, so far today? Absolutely. Good afternoon, Chris. And I'm coming to you from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Uh, just working out of my office today. Thought it would be more quiet here where I can enjoy um, co-hosting with uh, Chris and uh, it's Chris's job today to give out the jokes because it was my day. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. You know us mates, he like to tease and joke around and that's one of the great things that we're known for. So, uh, and I'm one of those. I love to tease and, and joke around and have fun. Yeah. So hopefully we can have fun today. <laughs> oh, you bet. And I'm just to be honest, I'm not one for jokes. I'm more one for humorous anecdotes. <laughs> oh, okay. So you'll have some so, of those today, right? I'll try to have some of those as we're going on today. So, yeah, I don't know for those of you who are joining us, it's a little bit of a, I know we're, we're kind of indoors, uh, but outside right now, at least here in Saskatoon, it's uh, much cooler than it has been over the last couple of days. I think it's around 21, 22 degrees outside right now, which is, you know, quite pleasant, actually. I see some clouds rolling in. I think we we're supposed to maybe get some rain today, but... You know what? It's a, it's a great afternoon. I'm, I'm so looking forward to, to this. It's uh, nice to have a little bit of a break from the heat because it sounds like we're going to have another hot one next week as well. So a good, a good day to spend some time just enjoying some traditional Métis activities and watching some, some amazing videos and some greetings that we're going to be getting from, from different groups right across the country here. Absolutely. So today <laughs> we're going to be... Uh, we have a full schedule and a full lineup, and I, I can't wait till tonight where we can actually enjoy the the bands that are going to be playing. Somewhat like at Batosh, where on sat Friday and Saturday nights we we host the entertainment and we have a lot of old time dancing, and that's when all the the grassroots people get up and uh, let their feet glide across the floor, and uh, it's it's very nice seeing that at Batosh and everybody enjoying themselves. You bet, yeah. It's always such a highlight of Batosh is those Friday and Saturday night jamborees, as I like to call them. You know, it's it's a great opportunity to highlight some of those amazing uh, artists that we have for Batosh, uh, for the Métis Nation, I should say, to come out and provide that entertainment for us. So this evening, uh, we're going to be having, starting at 6 o'clock, so we'll have the Voyeurs. Uh, always great to see those guys. Uh, they're amazingly talented uh, father and son duo. Ovid uh, Pilon will be joining us as well, and uh, Dean Smith, who you would have seen last night as part of the Vittle Jamboree that we had last night, and uh, Ryan Kaplan. So, yeah, some uh, absolutely amazing talent that will be, uh, 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 try that again, that we'll be showcasing this evening as part of our uh, showcase and jamboree for tonight. Uh, we've got some, so if you follow along on our website, we're going to actually have a couple of interesting um, additions to today's schedule that. Uh, uh, we wanted to make sure that everybody got a chance to see. And the first one is going to be, I haven't seen this yet. I think it's going to be a, uh, something that is a, a treat for all of us to see. So as you know, we were we had people submit videos as part of the competitions for both the jigging and the fiddling and uh, square dancing competitions. So we had one lady from Kamloops, BC, uh, Brenda Purcell, maiden name Boyer, who had provided us a uh, video for the jigging competition. Fortunately, we didn't get it in time to put it in there. But from what we were told by the organizers, it was such a, a great video. Uh, she's an older lady, from what we were told, uh, from Kamloops. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that she was uh, highlighted and, and uh, that her video was out there so that you could all could see it as part of our 2020 Back to Batosh Festival. And she, um, also, won, she also won a prize at the Back to Batosh in 2017 for right. her dancing. So, yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So without further ado, you know, let's uh, cue up the video of uh, Brenda Purcell, maiden name Boyer from Kamloops, BC.
And Chiquilla, hello, how are you? I'm doing the Red River Jig, three fancies. Uh, the shuffle, a traditional, and horse. Here we go. Merci. Thank you. Uh, right on. Yeah, no, thank you so much for that. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to highlight uh, Brenda as part of the Back to Batash this year. Like I said, we, uh, I know for a number of people, this is something that I heard that the videos got in a little bit late and they weren't able to be included as part of the overall uh, uh, plan for this year, for the program for this year. So we wanted to make sure that we included her in there. Um, while we've got a minute before we go into our next video, I did note that uh, we do have a mutual friend of ours is uh, watching right now, Sherry. Uh, we mentioned that. him on Friday. Uh, uh, Saskatoon Police Service Chief Troy Cooper is uh, on uh, on here this afternoon, is watching with us. So, Troy, hats off to you. Uh, have a great afternoon. I hope that you're enjoying what you're seeing. <laughs> yeah. And hope you're having a great afternoon and enjoying what we're going to be putting on for you today. Uh, before we go to our next one, one thing I want to make sure that we do uh, is to acknowledge the sponsors and those that have been able that have uh, helped uh, put this, uh, this this celebration together for us this year. Even though we can't get together personally, you know, it still requires resources in order to put a production like this on. So obviously, I want to make sure that we give uh, some acknowledgments to the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan and Canadian Geographic for their <coughs> pardon me. Uh, for their support in order to bring this uh, 2020 virtual Back to Batosh to you all this afternoon. And as well, of course, uh, we do have several other sponsors that have provided support to us. Strut, which is the website designer that's allowing us to present to you this afternoon with this particular platform that we're using. Parks Canada and also NBC Mississippi Broadcasting uh, out of uh, La Ronge. So thank you so very much uh, for you guys. Uh, always great to have those supports in place and because without Without sponsors and, and uh, individuals that help with that, we can't put these types of productions on for you. So, no, thank you very much. Absolutely. I'd like to also uh, make recognize, recognize a few people who have been working behind the scenes very hard. And Lori Shea, Craig Maduk, Maduk, sorry, Craig, if I killed that, uh, Rena Montgomery and Julie Burns have been working nonstop um, on Back to Batosh once we started uh, to recognize that we were going to have it virtually. They have been working nonstop and I just want to give a shout out to them and thank them for their for their many hours of work and you know getting these videos in it's very hard for us older people who do not aren't very techie so you know we were having trouble and there's a lot of people out there having the same problem but this is what we got and this is our show and uh, I think it's going to be great and I want to also uh, shout out to all the presidents across the homeland um, and say hi to them and thanks for joining us and yeah Troy stay on the line all day and watch me and Chris and we'll be uh, shouting you out during the day like we did the other day that you missed. <laughs> exactly. One other individual that I wanted to maybe just acknowledge as well is the lady that's been working so closely with Sherry and I, uh, putting the programs together, getting the information to us so that we have uh, all of the right information to pass along to all of you. And that's Angelica Hagert, who's uh, with us out of uh, uh, Ontario, I think out just outside of Ottawa is where she's based. Yeah. So Angelica, thank you so very much for everything that you've done with us over the last couple of days. 
your your dedication, your professionalism uh, has been greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you so very much for all the work that you've done to get this together for as well. Yes, thank you, Angelica. So on that note, I think uh, we're going to introduce Elder Sophie McDougall. Elder, Elder Sophie is from my region, which is the Prince Albert region, originally coming from um, St. Louis, Saskatchewan. So Lou, uh, Sophie sits with me on the Aboriginal Head Start board. So uh, she is very um, knowledgeable uh, she's 93 years old and uh, has many kids, but I, I, she might explain that and how many she has in her presentation. But I just want to say she's she is uh, somebody to look up to in our community. She's very well respected and uh, I just think she's a wonderful little lady. And uh, thank you for joining us, Sophie. And uh, with that, I think it's uh, Sophie's turn to to give her presentation. And I thank you, uh, merci beaucoup to GDI and to Parks Canada for asking me to, to this. I am a proud uh, elder on the Prince Albert BT Women Organization. I was a teacher for 13 and a half years. I just started teaching in 1945, which is quite a few years ago. Uh, there have been a lot of changes in the technology and the, and the different ways of teaching since then. I have uh, a large family. I had 13 children and I have 11 living. I have 34 grandchildren living. I, I lost two grandchildren. I have, and right now I have 42 great grandchildren and uh, we're expecting twin uh, great-grandchildren in October. It is quite exciting. Uh, there are a lot of twins in my family. I had twin girls. My son had identical twin boys. Uh, one of my grandsons already has two twin boys, but they're not identical. We're just waiting to see if the, these new twins are going to be identical and if they're going to be girls or boys or whatever. It doesn't make any difference to accept them and be happy over the whole thing. And uh, being Aboriginal days, I think it's time to for the meeting women to keep on, to keep moving on. Uh, we've already accomplished quite a bit. There have been a lot of changes in my life. Uh, when I was 16 and going to teacher's college, and they talked about the Battle of Batash, I thought to myself, gee, that's a different version to what my grandmothers told me, because my great-grandfather and my great-uncle were killed in the rebellion. My, uh, my great-grandfather died the last day of the rebellion. And uh, my grandparents often talked about the rebellion, but <laughs> it was totally different from, to the what the professor in uh, Musha was talking about. But you know, at the age of 16, and the first time really away from home, I was too shy to mention the, the difference in the versions. If it was nowadays, I, I would be willing to stand up and say, hey, that's totally different to what I know it was. Anyway, thank you very much. I, I have a little story to tell you. I was an acquaintance of Mr. Joseph Jibault. Uh, he lived around St. Louis and Lecoq District. And he was a nephew to Gabriel Dumont. And uh, he, he was a very comical fellow. I did uh, all the correspondence for him. He'd always come to get me to write all these letters and that. And he had all the uh, Gay Building Wants medals. And this fellow in the States had offered to, to buy, buy them from him for a certain amount of money. So I was, 
I wrote the letter uh, to tell this gentleman that he was accepting the price and that he would sell the medals. He was also very funny. And uh, one day, this French fellow said to him, Monsieur Dumont, pense-tu qu'il va pleuvoir aujourd'hui? Ah ben non, je connais pas. Mais je pense qu'il va mourir bien vite. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for that, Elder Sophie. That was uh, that was such great, uh, great words to hear, especially some of that history, like you said. Thirteen children and did you say eleven grandchildren? 11, Is that correct? Well, eleven still living. Eleven, 11 still, still living. living. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, big family. I can imagine at Christmas time uh, how many people are, they must have to rent a hall for hall sure. Must for sure, yeah. So uh, I got a notice here that there was a shout out that came across, uh, I think from the Facebook page from Darlene Rose Okamason Seacott, which is who is my wife. <laughs> so shout out to my wife, who I think is probably watching in the bedroom right now as I'm hogging up the, the kitchen as we speak. So thank you so much for the, for the shout out to my wife. Hope you're uh, doing all right. I know you're just down the hall from where we are right now. So that's great to yeah. hear. I'd like to give a few shout outs today. I have a couple birthdays that I want to acknowledge. Uh, my stepsister, Connie Cloche, it's her birthday today. We also have Beatrice Fiddler, it's her birthday today. And one of our entertainers, Jason Lapine, one of the um, fiddle judges, it's his birthday today. So happy birthday, everybody. Yes, also, happy. oh, sorry. Chris, no, I was just going to say, yes, happy birthday to uh, to those individuals for sure. I also want to acknowledge a few people, like all the people that are sick and, and shut in. I know COVID is a really hard time. And um, last night I had one of my friends um, experience something last night and now he's sick in the hospital in Saskatoon. And so hopefully we can, uh, everybody can get better and this COVID's going to get over soon and, and we'll be able to socialize and be together again. Yeah, I think that's the over, overriding sentiment for a lot of people is that uh, hopefully at some point we'll get to back to some level of normalcy or whatever that normal is going to look like yeah. here going forward. But yeah, to anybody who's sick or shut in right now, thank you for taking time out of your day to come and join us. You know, I'm glad we're able to actually do this so that you can participate. And some years you may not have been able to as a result. So, so thank you so very much uh, for those opportunities to, to come into your living rooms, come via your your electronic devices, whatever the case may be, so we can we can continue to to celebrate our community and continue to to keep those traditions alive as well. Yeah. So coming up next is our probably one of my favorites because uh, well I like to eat um, <laughs> and and through COVID I know I've gained some COVID weight as a result of that. So yeah, oh, yeah. gotta uh, hopefully once the gyms start opening up more fully again, I can try to get back in there, but I've been staying up for about five years so we'll to see how long that continues to go. But we've got our, our food truck alley coming up this afternoon here again, coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, and again, just a reminder to everybody that uh, these videos are available online uh, at the backtobotagedays.ca website. You just have to click on the food truck alley portal. All the videos are on there and as well, all the recipes are written out too. So uh, there's an opportunity if you are wanting to try out these recipes at home, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be doing, uh, you'll have the opportunity to do so and you can actually get instructions right off of the videos for that as well. Sure. So I see there's Lugalette is going to be one of the recipes. So, so uh, Lugolette is fried bannock. Um, I think Chief Troy Cooper had a, a taste of mine. So uh, hopefully they were good. And then Lily, Lily's boiled sturgeon. Have you ever had that, Chris? I haven't. Um, well, no, that's not true. It's been years since I've had that. I'll just put it that way, yeah. Okay. And then we have Felix. Felix from uh, uh, Stanley Mission, he's uh, a vet, uh, a war vet, and he is going to be making us La Puchin. So mm -hmm. my grandma used to make that, and uh, it's a process to that. So this is going to be interesting to watch. For sure, yeah, looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. 
So thank you for everybody that submitted uh, recipes and uh, hopefully we can all try them out someday. You bet. Yeah. So this, uh, we do have one more uh, food truck alley video that will be tomorrow morning uh, when we're back here tomorrow for the final day of our virtual back to the Tosh. So, um, but enjoy the videos that are coming up here and hopefully, as we said, give them a try. Uh, the, the recipes and everything videos are up on the website. So enjoy our third installment of the food truck alley. Tansy, my name is Lily. Today we're going to cook sturgeon. It's an ancient fish that's in the delta. And the first thing that you need to do is to wash it real good because it's really quite slimy. And um, it's cut up in chunks. My grandson caught it for us and brought it home for a, for a meal. So run it under water, wash it. And then get a knife to start scraping the um, the skin. Won't take long. The um, sturgeon is very healthy to eat, and um, all you need to do is to boil it in water after you wash it, and uh, then you will add some salt into the water. And once you're sturgeon uh, is clean and you will place it into the boiled water very carefully and um, three pieces is good for a family to eat all you need to do is to put it in there and cover it up and let it boil for about 25 30 minutes and um, after it boils, you're ready to take it out and then serve it. That's boiled sturgeon. It is very good to eat. Tansa, Vanessa Gardner Nisigasen. Today we're going to be making a uh, lagalette, which is bannock and mitchiff. So right now we're standing in my kitchen, or you're staring at my kitchen, and I'm just going to introduce the cups that we'll be using the measuring cups, the ingredients, and what we'll be do what we'll be doing today. So, cup one cup of mitchiff is li pot. Flour and mitchiff is la farin. Syrup. We're going to be using a little bit of this. It's lam las. My mom and my grandma really love using mitch um, syrup in their bannock. Um, I'll be using some baking powder. Pagasigan, I'll be using an egg, wow we, and salt, sel. This is a bowl, in Mitchell we say il poil, il poil, and then we're going to be using some pimi. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to heat it up, heat up the, li, the oil, the pimi, and the li poil. So I'm just gonna pour it all in. Right in here is probably about a cup and a half. And I'm gonna heat up my stove, put it to about four, and you want it nice and hot. So while that's heating up, we're going to start on our ingredients. Hi, Tansa. So now we're going to put our ingredients together. So I'm gonna put in niwa, lipat, la farin. So that's four cups of flour. Nesto. And then I'm going to add the baking powder. Sagasigan. I'm going to add miso. Let's we add. Look, miso. And then I'm going to add a pinch of salt. I'm going to 
mix it together. Um, see, sit. Add some nafi, some water. And then I'm also going to add some teaspoons of lamlas. One, piak. I'm going to add piak, wawa, one egg. Then I'm going to stir it together like so. You may need to add a little bit more flour or a little bit more nappy. My mom also likes to use milk in her mite and her fried bag, so I'm probably gonna add a little bit of here, which is milk. So piakli pot, just to get a little bit brown. We have to add just a little bit more flour just to get it all doughy. I like to get... Oh, really blah. And we're just going to knead it like so. Too doughy, but it's nice and soft. Just make sure you knead the dough. Otherwise, it gets really hard. Okay. So just continue to knead it till it's nice and soft. Next step we're going to do is we're going to like so, just knead it, and this is it. She folds it and she just make sure it's nice and flat because if the dough's too thick, then it gets really thick and kind of doughy in the middle. So just make sure it's flat. Push it, and then we're going to. And I'm going to transfer it over here so I don't cut the counter. I'm gonna take my. And I'm gonna cut like so. Just cutting it all the way down. And then what I'm gonna this do is how my my nookum does it. Show you this way, and then I'll show you another way. I've seen it done before. Then you poke a hole in the middle, and you just kind of twist your bannock in like this. So there's kind of two different ways to do. We can do it both ways, and we'll just. Try, but I want to see if my really hot yet. Uh, two more minutes and just go like this. How small or big you make them? That is another word. This is the fake. Or like a to say to us paguisa gun. So what we're gonna do is we'll count how many we have here and then our oil should be done. You got we have 15. So is isn't ready yet. I should have turned it up a little bit higher. But once that's ready, we can start frying our leaf. Okay, so I think my my oil take a yuck knee. So Put them all in one. Oh, the, the knee is nice and hot. It's a feel. Yep, see some is still new. So we're going to let those fry up. Watch. You can tell, you'll tell by the sides when it's turning brown. When it will remind you to help to flip your bannock, your lee base, when the heat is really hot. And when the oil is nice and golden brown. Together. Usually it takes about, I've seen my nookum add a half a potato in there that keeps the oil from turning black. You can see the dough rising there. And a minute. We'll ready here with a napkin in it to drain the grease. This can also be called grease bannock as well. This can be enjoyed with some jam, some syrup have a bologna stick. And usually both sides will match in color. There you go, sir. Ready to rub. Yeah. 
may be able to put one more leave it in there. Tuck it right in there. Here we have our final product, Libe La Galette or Paglisagan, and you can enjoy it with some jam. And there's the end. And there is my Lopatin cans. And put the, the mixture in there. And then we put it in a pot of water and then when it's all done it looks like this there's your matey lopatin you take it out of the can take it out of the can it looks like so you can let it cool off and eat it with some butter Oh, great Whoa. stuff. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. yeah look, uh, their, their baking pans were uh, pans a long time ago, right? Yeah. I remember that. And I remember those those pudding cakes that were in different sizes. I always wondered how they got them that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I haven't had sturgeon, like I said, in quite a while but yeah it's a, it's a very lean fish from what i've been told but yeah it's an extremely healthy fish as well so um i'll have to talk to ryan the next time i see him to see if he can get me some yeah, from, down from cumberland house and we'll see what we can do from there for sure so tomorrow on the mm -hmm. recipe on uh, food truck alley is going to be fish patties with joan and i believe joan is from the range area um, Meiji tacos with Vanessa. Vanessa is the one that just did uh, La Galette just a minute ago uh, with the fried bannock. And she's going to do a spin off of the tacos and make, uh, I mean, sorry, a spin off of the bannock and, and make tacos out of that. And mm -hmm. then uh, May's cherry pie. Never had, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have tried that cherry pie because she does a lot of events in uh, Saskatoon, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, as I said yesterday, if you spent any time at all during Folk Fest at the uh, uh, First Nations and Métis Pavilion at the Friendship Center uh, here in Saskatoon, uh, May does the majority of the cooking for that, and you definitely would have had her cherry pie as part of that. And actually, I did want to give a little bit of a shout out here. Uh, we do have got a number of people that I'm taking a look at right now uh, who are watching. May's actually watching right now. May Henderson, hi, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. It's great to have you on here. We have Linda St. Cyr Sarek from Stonewall, Manitoba. Welcome, and I hope you're enjoying the afternoon as well. Uh, Hi, Linda. Spent many, I spent many a time, uh, uh, well, I lived in Winnipeg for about eight years. Stonewall's just outside of Winnipeg, so you know, great to see that uh, we've got people from, uh, from the homeland that are watching. Uh, Jason Muscant, thank you very much. Good afternoon to you as well. Uh, and then a few other people, uh, Rena Sinclair Kennedy, great to see that you're out here this afternoon. And uh, who else do I see in here? Oh, a friend of mine who, uh, a former colleague of mine that I worked with when I was working for RBC Royal Bank, Jody Dykel here in Saskatoon. Great to see you as well. I hope you're enjoying the afternoon. Uh, these, uh, it's just great to see there's so many diverse people that are watching uh, this from coast to coast this afternoon. Uh, great to have you all here. And if you want to be acknowledged and have a little bit of a shout out, we'd be more than happy to do that for you as well. Absolutely. And uh, on Thursday, we had 5,000 hits, and that was our first day. So uh, I don't know if we got the numbers for yesterday, but uh, I'm sure we can keep you posted on that. And today, I'm sure will be uh, extra special and be uh, hopefully we can hit over 10,000. You bet. That's kind of what I'm hoping for as well. And I'm sure as you mentioned it, I'm sure Angeline is probably pulling those numbers up yeah. now as we speak, and we'll have those to us uh, well after we come out of our next section here. So, actually, and our next session right now, you know, get the kids ready. This is uh, one of our favorite uh, events that we do here with the Little Jiggers Corner. We've got a very interesting afternoon for you coming up here with the Little Jiggers Corner coming up. Uh, we've got 
<coughs> pardon me, changes uh, the book. Uh, we've also got the turtle, turtle rattle calf craft. Boy, I'm having a hard time speaking this afternoon. I don't know <laughs> what it is yet. Uh, the rabbit dance story and learning to step and dot painting. And of course, we're going to have Samson uh, that'll be part of that as well. And I believe that the, some of these are actually being done as well through GDI this afternoon too. So thank you very much for that contribution as well. Yep, thank you. Yeah, uh, learn to two step. That's that's going to be interesting. Our little kids, mm -hmm. we need to bring that back. You know, uh, uh, we used to go to dances and see everybody flying across the floor. And uh, I think we kind of lost that a little bit along the way. But I think, um, well, in Prince Albert area, I know uh, we have Ben and Debbie Smith and Sandy and Hilliard um, Morasti, and they were going to do some. Uh, classes for us because us baby boomers kind of sat back and didn't get involved in that before and now everybody's wanting to learn how to do the old time dancing so in the Prince yeah. Albert area we're going to be offering uh, old time dance lessons here once we can uh, get back to socializing. You bet and I think here in Saskatoon and uh, maybe if somebody has more information on this they can pass it on but I think at St. Michael's uh, which has a very ingrained uh, Métis curriculum over there. I do believe they are teaching not only fiddling, but they're also doing square dancing and two-stepping as well, if I'm not mistaken, as part of their, their curriculum. So again, if there's anybody that, that knows that for sure and can pass that along, that'd be greatly appreciated. And I know that the Friendship Center here in, in downtown Saskatoon also offers some uh, some traditional dancing uh, classes that are part of their um, uh, their out, uh, outreach programs as well. So no, it's great to see that there's such an interest, like you said, in, in the youth uh, taking on some of those roles uh, in terms of the cultural learnings and, and being out there and uh, taking that, uh, uh, helping to keep the, the culture alive. Absolutely, and I think uh, it's coming back more and more as we as we progress and uh, we move along in the nation. Um, we're getting that pride back um, in our culture and uh, proud to be Métis, you know. Uh, today only happens once, so we have to make it amazing. And uh, so for our, for our youth, we want to make it amazing for them and leave a legacy and uh, bring back our Machif language and all of our cultures and traditions so hopefully we're starting to get that going again mm -hmm. and then the other thing i forgot to mention as well um as we had, uh, mentioned with yesterday uh, there was a plant video that unfortunately did, didn't uh, uh kind of a plants history video a use of plants video that uh, was supposed to be included yesterday with little jiggers corner unfortunately the video didn't get in on time for yesterday but we have it for this afternoon as part of the little jiggers corner here so Let's get that all queued up and get the kids ready and enjoy our Little Jiggers Corner. Changes written and illustrated by Penny Condon. Kona liked to laugh out loud, but once she started, she could not stop. Kona means snow in Cree. So Kona decided to ask the gathering spirit how to stop from feeling so happy. The spirit said, Kona, you have to think of something that is going to make you feel sad. As Kona walked home, she started to think of all the trees and how the leaves were beautiful colors of red, yellow, and green. She knew that soon the trees would be bare. Kona became sad and could not stop feeling this way. So she asked the gathering spirit how to stop feeling sad. The spirit said, Kona, you have to think of something that is going to make you feel angry. As Kona walked home, she started to think about all the leaves on the ground and how the snow would soon cover the beautiful flowers. Kona became angry and could not stop feeling this way. So she asked the gathering spirit how to stop feeling angry. The spirit said, Kona, 
you have to think of something that is going to make you feel surprised. As Kona walked home, she started to think about the snow melting and how everything on earth begins to grow. She thought about the animals that come out to play and she became surprised by this miracle. Kona went one last time to the gathering spirit and asked, why did you want me to think of things that made me feel sad, angry, and surprised? The gathering spirit said, Kona, you have experienced feelings that have helped you see that our emotions change like the seasons. You have learned that one season cannot exist without the other. The spirit smiled and said, how do you feel now? Kona replied, I feel loved. Thank you, Gathering Spirit, for your beautiful teachings. The end. Bomatang boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the book Changes, written and illustrated by me. I had so much fun painting the pictures, and I'm excited to be doing this craft with you today. We are going to be making a turtle rattle. And the supplies that you are going to need are two round paper plates two popsicle sticks, a green piece of paper, and crayons or markers, your choice. You will also need a pair of scissors and something dried. I have dried lentils here, but you can use macaroni, you can use rice, any of those will work as um, the inside of your rattle. So try to see if you can find something around the house, that'll, even old buttons, it's up to you, little pebbles that you find outside, anything that'll make the rattle noise. So to begin, you are going to color your plates. I chose green just because the turtle's green, but you can, honestly, you can paint, paint our color it any color you want. I am going to stick with my green. I don't know, I just like green. But turtles are brown. You can even have a nice pink one, add some change to it. It really doesn't matter. But you have to color the whole, one of them, the whole entire piece. And the other one, you need to leave the inside circle white because in that you are going to be drawing your uh, picture. So I'm going to start by just coloring this one and I'm just going to use a crayon and I'm going to color the whole entire thing. And if you like to use um, markers instead, feel free. Your, your plate is going to get squashed for a little bit, but that's okay. It's going to pop right back up because we just want to add the color. Um, sometimes when I have a lot of time, I like to paint the plate, but you have to use acrylic paint and it, you have to let it dry. So it takes a lot longer and, um, it can also make your plate less sturdy if it's too much water on the plate, like paint. So that's why I tend with smaller children to do it with crayons or markers. I hope you're all coloring along with me once you have all your supplies. Remember, you can always press pause if you need to catch up, if you're going to get some supplies. Okay, see the lines? That's okay because uh, turtles have patterns on their back or on the front. So that's, that's one. See, if I go up, it pops right back up and you have one plate done. Okay, I'm going to take the other one and this one, remember I'm leaving this blank. Um, I want you to think about what you want in the circle. Um, my book was about the changing of seasons. So I chose to do four trees because you get different trees in winter, spring, summer, and fall. But the book was also about emotions. So if we wanted to do one about emotions, if we still divided it up into four, we can put emotions um, in each section. I know emojis are really popular right now. So if we wanted to put the first emoji 
a super happy guy. His teeth are just ding ding. There's your first one. You know, he's happy. This one, if you want to make a mad emoji, again, the eyes are the same, I think. Or mad, actually, let's make this one love because I think the um, emoji for mad had different eyes. Okay, so we'll do mad here. And remember, you can pick any emoji you want. It doesn't have to be um, what I'm drawing. Um, well, let's do sad. Okay. And we need the next one. I can't think of what would make it mad, maybe. Hmm. Straight across. That could be mad, it could be um, confused, but it's, you can tell that all four are different emotions. So now I'm going to continue to color around. And because I did that in pencil, I can always change my mind if I don't like the way it looks. And you got to color right to the circle. So, but again, every bit of the plate is colored. I know I'm kind of going fast. And I like to make sure that every bit of my plate is colored. I don't want to see any white pieces. So, when we even color our emotions, you got to think of the background because I don't want to see any white besides the white that you can't cover because it's indented in the in the plate giving you a pattern the texture you have to come up with the backgrounds for the other okay so the plate is also getting squashed again but again it doesn't matter because you can pop it back up okay so there's my second plate so when you think of colors with emotions when we know the first one he's happy and we're going to make him uh, yellow because he's a uh, sunshine. Sunshine is happy. I think of yellow as a, a happy little color. Okay. Um, mad, I think of red, very red, like angry. Most people, when they get mad, they get a, this is almost pink. I thought it was red. Oh, well. They get red in the face um, when they're angry. Um, when you are sad, I think of blue. It's very sad when you're blue. That's why people say you've got the blues because you're, you're feeling down. So we're going to color this guy blue. And remember, you could still choose to do the trees. The difference in the trees is winter has no leaves. Summer has lots of leaves. Autumn has colorful leaves. And spring has green leaves starting to bud on the trees so that's the difference with these loved ones we know that for sure the eyes are going to be this bright red because they're hearts and we can choose any color I think I'm going to choose a I like yellow but I'll choose a lighter yellow bright yellow all right so there's my Four emotions but we need to have see it more so what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline it with a black marker if you have and I want to make sure that they see the teeth there's the love emotion And this one's the angry one. And this one is the sad one. Okay, there is my 
for. But like I said, I don't like to leave any white. So let's color the backgrounds. And I think I'm going to get a nice purple and I'm gonna put purple on the back of this one. So I color it all in. And these are just simple crafts for you to do um, at home. You can make it as beautiful or as hard as you want. If you have paint, you can use the paint. Um, if you have larger plates, you can make a larger one, even though I find with the larger one, it's harder to get uh, the rattle to work. You have to really reinforce it. Um, I am also going to use a blue on the background of the happy. So let's come in together. And if I get orange, oh, there's my orange. So I'm going to color the blue background orange. Nice complimentary color. Okay. And my last one, I think I am going to use a light green. No, you know what? Let's do yellow. I like the yellow. All right, there you have it. You have your two pieces for your turtle. Your next step is to take your green piece of paper, okay? And you are going to cut out your legs and your head. Now I know a lot of you are going to want to draw out your head because the head almost looks like a doorknob. If you start at the bottom here and you go up, there's the neck and you just make a round, that's the head, okay? Looks like a doorknob. You can cut that out. But I think I want the neck to be a little bit longer. So just remember to make it a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna freehand and then I'll show you what I mean. Because you have to be able to glue a bit of the neck inside. So there's my, my um, head, okay? The feet, what I like to do with the legs of the, turtle is I take my piece of paper and I fold it in half because you want to have two of the same um, feet so I'm just gonna cut and there's the two okay I'm gonna do the same for the other other legs folded it in half and I'm gonna cut around and there's the other ones okay there you have the limbs the next step you have to do is you have to take your popsicle sticks if you have masking tape at home you can use masking tape to put them together but if you have a glue gun that works even better because you're going to take the glue gun and you're going to put small dab here and you're going to glue these two to make a nice long stick okay but like I said the popsicle stick you could easily take a piece wrap it around so it's secure and you'll still get the long stick why you need it to be this long is because you have to make sure that it can reach from the top of your plate and still have something to hold on to to rattle but this reinforces once the little dried lentils or dried macaroni rice is inside. So the next step is to do to glue on your head and your legs. So because I have the glue gun out, I'm going to use it, but you can use a glue stick. You can use whatever to tape it down if you'd like. So there is my head, okay? I'm gonna put glue on where I want the legs to go and I'm just gonna put those 
down. So now I've got those two. I'm going to go to the bottom of the plate and I'm going to put these down. Okay. Uh, one thing that you can see just by looking at is we're missing a tail. So with the leftover green, you can cut out a tail and it's almost like a, um, a ch not a check mark, but almost kind of looks like a dog's tail, but not as, um, sorry, I'll just show you here. Cause it does help the turtle swim a little bit it's longer. Kind of looks like that. So it's kind of like the, um, legs, but it's got more of a uh, turn on it, like a curl. So we'll just go like that. There we go. So we have those. So while we have our glue out, let's reinforce our stick, putting glue right at the top of the turtle, all the way down to the tail. And then you're going to take your stick and glue it. Now, if you're doing this craft at school, your teachers most likely will handle the glue gun. Um, if you have mom or dad at home or cook them or mush them, they can help you, older cousin, brother, sister, okay? So now you have that. You know that's going to be your um, turtle rattle that holds. So then we have to do is we have to get our dried stuff. And I'm just going to take about that much, drop it in. It might be too much. You just want to make a round noise. I think I'm going to put that much. And then I have to glue this around. So again, with the hot glue gun, I'm going to do it in sections. I'm going to do it from this leg around to this leg. And then I can hold it down. Oops. And let it sit for a bit. Okay. So we've got that section glued. Then I can lift it up here and I can start adding more glue around the sides and I can keep putting the plate down and you're going to keep going all the way around. And if you miss spots along the way, you can go back with your glue and, and glue it down. But so far, I think it's glued pretty good. Okay, so there you have it, boys and girls, your turtle rattle. One last step. Let's put some eyes on there. I don't make my big dots. There we go. All right. I hope you enjoyed this craft and I look forward to seeing some of your uh, turtle rattles. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye. The Story of the Rabbit Dance by Jean Pelche, illustrated by J.D. Panas and translated into Machif by Rita Fuman. One day, a very long time ago, in a small Métis settlement, there lived a Machif trapper by the name of Jacques. It was almost time for the Métis gathering, and his wife, Therese, and their 12 children were all busy doing daily chores. Jacques was just finishing his cup of tea. He was going to bring home all his traps and snares before the snow was too deep. The river and lakes were almost frozen. Today was a very special day. They were getting ready to go to the gathering held every year. Friends, neighbors, and relatives gathered from near and far. They would exchange gifts, stories, songs, music, and dance. Everyone would bring food for this special occasion. This evening, Therese can go ahead with, to the gathering with the children, Jack thought to himself. Jacques put his cup of tea down and picked up his parflush bag and a 22. He said farewell to his family and was on his way thinking, I'll get to the gathering as soon as I can.
When Therese and the children arrived, everyone at the gathering was having a wonderful time. There was a lot of good food to eat. Old time quadrilles were being played and danced. Jacques was happy as he reached his last trap. By golly, now I can go dancing, he mumbled to himself as he started to return home. It would be dark when he reached home, but he would have enough time to go to the gathering because it would last three days. As Jacques started for home, he remembered that he would share another fancy jig step. As he hummed the Red River jig to himself, he began to dance. Right, left, right. One, two, three. He counted as he did this step four times, each time facing a different direction. He called his new step the four directions. When he returned home, he cleaned up and started out to the gathering. As Jacques came near the big house where everyone gathered, he could hear the wonderful sounds of the fiddles playing drops of brandy. Jacques could see the shadows of the people in the house dancing the dance du crochet. He heard the dogs barking and their sharp and the sharp whistles of the rabbits. Ah, he thought, the dogs must be chasing the rabbits. As he reached a clearing, he stopped very quickly. He moved toward the trees. There he stood and watched in surprise. He saw dogs of all sizes standing in a straight line. On the other side was a row of rabbits of all colors. Some of the dogs and rabbits were watching the people in the house dancing La Danse du Crochet. The rabbits at the window would tell the rabbits beside them what was happening at the dance so they could relay it to the others at the bottom of the hill. Well, the dogs were kind of lazy, so they told each other, just do what the rabbits do. Do what the rabbits do. The dogs would swing the rabbits and would slide step, chasing each rabbit in a figure eight formation until the dog tagged the rabbit and all the dogs had a turn. Then the rabbits would take their turn as they came down the line, they turned the dog around and slide stepped away doing a figure eight formation until the rabbit tagged the dog. They would all have a turn. When the music stopped, they too would stop. Jacques was never so happy as he was now. He could go and tell the story of what he had seen. Some people might not believe him, but he would show them how to do this new dance the rabbit dance, and that was the beginning of the rabbit dance. Do you know the moral of the story? No matter who you are or where you are, we are all equal. What two things did Jack teach you? The end. Hello everybody. My name's Courtney Dawn Anaquad and I will be your basic two-step jig instructor. Um, I just want to first of all say thank you for tuning into my video and thank you for having me as your instructor for this instructional basic two-step jig. Um, so I just want to say welcome to boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, um, I hope you enjoy this video on the basic two-step jig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and break it down to the best I can, the easiest possible way so you all can enjoy and learn how to um, start to jig. And with that, I like to start off with the basic two-step before it gets more advanced into more of the double heel toe tap jigging, which I don't want to make anything confusing at all. So I hope you enjoy and we'll get started here. Okay. Now the easiest way I like to um, instruct the basic two-step jig is that we have an, an imaginary ball in front of our feet. 
um, because we're going to um, tap the ball as well run on the spot. And what I mean by that is that we're going to slightly tap a ball and bring our foot back and then we're going to run on the spot and we're going to do vice versa. So we're going to do the left leg, um, the same thing. We're going to tap the ball just slightly and we're going to bring it back and then we're going to go one, two, three. Now, before I get more depth into the video, I'm just going to show you what a basic two-step jig looks like. <laughs> So what that's going to look like is we're going to go kick, one, two, three, kick, one, two, three, kick, one, two, three, kick, one, two, three. So that's going to be more into when I go in depth with the video. So the basic two step is going to go So that's what a basic two-step jig looks like. Now, when I break it down step by step, what that's going to look like is it's going to, remember, we're going to slightly tap the ball, bring our foot back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three. And then I'll switch this side and we're going to tap, bring back, one, two, three, left, back, run on the spot. So we're going to slightly tap the ball that we have in front of us, bring our foot back, and run on the spot. Left leg, tap the ball, bring it back, run on the spot. Right foot, bring it back, run on the spot. Left foot, back, run on the spot. Right foot, back, run on the spot. Left, back, run on the spot. So we're going to go right, run on the spot. Left, run on the spot. Right, run on the spot. Left, run on the spot. Right, run on the spot. Left, run on the spot. Right, run on the spot. Left, run on the spot. Right, run on the spot, left, run on the spot, right, run on the spot, left, run on the spot. Now I'm going to come forward to you guys, so we're going to go right, run on the spot, left, run on the spot, and when we're doing this run on the spot, we're going to take the baby step, so we're going to go right, back, run on the spot, right, back, one, two, three, right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three, right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three, left, right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three. Now I'm going to go backwards. So same thing. We're going to go right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three, right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three. I'll do it sideways. So we're going to go right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three. We're going to keep our feet low to the ground as possible. 
Um, this is your traditional basic two subject, which your feet are more lower to the ground when we do this style of dance, which can be danced into a polka or a first change in a square dance, just like um, the tune called Romeo's First Change, um, which I'll be playing once we put all of the basics together. Again, so we're gonna go right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three, right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three, right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three, right, back, one, two, three, left, back, one, two, three. So now I'm going to play Romeo's first change and we're going to put that together and I'll show you what it looks like. And remember, <laughs> we're going to be going left, one, two, three, right, one, two, three, left, one, two, three, and then right, one, two, three, left, one, two, three, right, one, two, three. And I usually like to start off with my right foot. Um, that's my more dominant and strongest leg to start um, the dance off. And usually we start it off in an eight beat count. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and play Romeo's first change for everybody. Right. 
that, my friends, is the basic two-step jig. Um, I hope you all enjoy, and I hope I broke it down as easy as possible. Um, and I hope you all enjoy this video. And with much love from Courtney Dawn Anaquad, and I hail from Muscapating Soto no Nation. And I currently reside in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Bomatang boys and girls, I hope you learned a lot about the flower beadwork people and why the Métis are so proud and still today wear flowers on their clothing. Today we're going to do um, dot art um, inspired by the flower beadwork people. And this is just a larger sample of what we'll be doing. But today you will be making a bookmark. Okay, so what you are going to need to do this craft is you're going to need a piece of paper. I chose a black one. It doesn't have to be black. You can use any color that you have around the house. And you're also going to need to have six colors of paint. I choose lighter colors because they do show up nicer on the black, but you don't have to. Sorry, six colors and then green for the leaves. So there's your six colors. These can be purchased at the Dollar Tree or Dollarama. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on your paint and it lasts a long time. You are also going to need to have an old margarine lid because that is what you're going to put the paint on. Do you see how very little uh, dabs of paint you're going to use? That's why I say that this is going, to, the paint will last you a long time. You are also going to need something to make the dots. I use a dowel from the kitchen or a skewer, I should say, and it's got the really pointy, pointy end and around and at the bottom. You can see that's got paint on it because I've done painting before and all I do is wipe it off after each color. If you don't have a skewer at home, use Q-tips. I've got three there. Why I have more than one is because once you put it in a color, you have to change that Q-tip. You can't keep using it or dip it in a different color. So we shall begin. Try to have a paper towel beside you or a Kleenex, something like that, because you will need to wipe the paint off your dowel or if you get any, make a mess, you have something close by to wipe. So let's start by making a five petal flower. I am gonna to choose to do a Q-tip this time and I'm also going to choose to use white. And I am just gonna make five dots. You don't have to push down too hard. Okay, there's my five petal. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't um, keep reapplying the paint. Let's choose uh, purple this time. And watch what happens as, oops, I shouldn't dip. If I, if I just keep going around, do you notice how you can see it, the black? You leave a black little circle in the middle. That's because you've used all the paint. So you have to re-dip every single time and apply it to the paper. Otherwise, you are going to get that black in the, in the middle of your color. So there I've got two. One's a five petal, one is a six petal. So I've used white on one side, purple on the other. And I'm going to put that aside because I can't use it again unless I use a different color. So we have to think of if you want to make a larger flower, you, you can still think of the shape of the petal. I like to do this kind of shape, but again, you do not have to. Uh, my shape, I have to keep dabbing after every single one. There's one petal. Okay, here's going to be another one. Q-tips, they don't give you that full circle all the time so they're a little tricky so i'm just going to switch to the dowel to finish and i'm going to put here see the dowel has a little bit smaller of a dot 
but I can still finish. There's three. And this is going to overlap this purple one, which is fine. There's four. And if I don't want it to, I don't have to. I can just leave it as four. So there's my big flower, but it's not done. You have to fill in the inside of your petals. So just putting dots on the inside. Okay. I need to have a middle in all my flowers. So I like to use yellow for the white because it makes me think of daisies. So there's one there. Again, I got to wipe the tip. I don't want to use yellow again. And I'm going to use uh, red for this purple. There we go. I really like how the red stands out. So I think I'm going to keep doing red and I'm going to make it do for the inside of this one. It seems to make it pop. Okay, there you've got your three. I need to add some leaves. So this is when I can dab in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to use the both ends. First, I'm going to use this one. As I start going around, though, I'm going to flip it over to this really, really skinny one. I'm going to dip it in. And you can see that the dots get smaller as I go around, okay? So let's do the same for the other side. Whoopsie. I'm gonna keep going until I'm ready to switch. I'm gonna switch and then I'm gonna keep going. Sometimes it slips on me and I get a line, but it still looks okay. There we go. So you have two swirlies. We need leaves for those little guys. So you can choose what you want to use. If you want to use the Q-tip, dip it in. Just be careful because these guys are little. If you push down, you're going to get a bigger dot. If you just gently touch the paper, you're going to get a smaller dot. So it's up to you. You get to control how big you want it but there's no wrong way because honestly once you have all the dots in there it starts to look beautiful okay i'm going to go back to the dowel so i can make a leaf for this guy here whoops see how i dabbed way too big there but it doesn't matter because it's all coming together now of course you're going to have to let it dry Let's say we want to put a frame on this. I've already said I really like the white. I haven't used any of the pink yet. So I'm just going to make a dotted, I'm going to make a frame. I'm going to do three dots of white, two dots of pink, and I'm going to keep going until I make a pattern. So three dots, two dots. And I, what I might try to do is just eyeball where those two dots are going to be and keep going around so I don't have to keep changing my um, color on, on my stick. But you see, I'm going to make a pattern. I know you guys probably have learned patterns in school, so you know what makes pattern. So that's one side. And I need to have my pink. It's going to overlap a little bit on the blue, but not too much. Okay, do you see the pattern? I think that's starting to look beautiful. So let's finish it and work all the way around. You got to be really careful though, because you got to hold it steady because it doesn't sometimes moves. So now I'm on pink, so I got to think of three spaces because I don't want to change my, but you can do whatever works best for you. There is no right way, boys and girls, and it's up to you. You can be as creative as you want. If you just want one big flower, oh, do you see how I already messed up and I put three pink ones? Doesn't matter. I'm going to dip it in. I'm going to keep working on this and I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, 
watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover it. One, two, three. But if I didn't want to, it's okay. We learn from our mistakes. And sometimes you can make happy mistakes and things turn out beautiful. So if you make a mistake, don't get stressed out over it. You just got to keep going. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to be done pretty quick. The last color I need is the pink again to make my dots. But I'm running out of room to hold on to it. There you go, boys and girls. Last step is to let it dry. And then you have yourself a bookmark. I hope you enjoyed this craft. Horse tail, also known as puzzle weed. There are many different types of horse tail, ranging in size and geographical region. The horse tail we use is known as rough horse tail, but there are over a dozen varieties. Harvesting. You want to ensure you're in the right headspace and have a positive attitude, with the intent not to harm the plant nor take more than you need. We harvest horsetail by cutting the stalks with scissors. You want to early on when they are bright green before they enter the second stage of their life, often in early June. Once we harvest enough horsetail, we tie it into bundles and allow to dry. Horsetail tea. Horsetail tea can be helpful for kidneys and bladder as it works as a diuretic but it can also help with strong bones and strong hair, skin, and nail. To make horsetail tea, we took the harvested horsetail and cut into small pieces and added boiling water. You will want about a 1 to 4 ratio of horsetail to water. Allow to steep overnight and enjoy the benefits of horsetail. Strengthening my connection to the land, my identity, and my mom. Dandelions. Often just a weed that is everywhere has so much more value than one spot. These beautiful little yellow flowers are full of powerful antioxidants and have an excellent source of vitamins A, C, and K. They help reduce inflammation and can help after a sunburn. Harvesting. When we go harvesting, it is important to be in the right headspace and have a positive attitude. The goal is to try not to harm the plant. But when harvesting dandelions, it's important to go around the first bloom of the season when you'll be able to harvest enough and go late enough in the day once the morning dew has dried. Once we get home from harvest, we sort through the flowers we have harvested and allow them to lay flat and dry out a bit. You do not want them to sit for longer than 12 hours or they will go to seed. We learned that first hand. Dandelion lotion is something my mom and I have done for years. When we make our dandelion lotion, we allow the dandelions to sit in a covered jar for a week or two, and then we put them in a pot on low heat for about an hour, stirring regularly to get all the oil out. You could also make it directly in a crock pot and allow it to steep that way and avoid having them sit in jars. Once the oil is out of the flowers, we strain it, typically twice, to get all the flower particles out. Once strained, we put it back on the heat and add tamanu oil. Tamanu oil is optional, but it is very healthy for your skin. And we add beeswax. Beeswax is our base. When you're putting the beeswax in, it is often a guessing game. So start small. You can tell if you have enough when you're whisking the lotion and it doesn't drip. After, pour into jars and enjoy the bright yellow lotion and all the benefits it brings to your skin. 
Dandelion Jelly. Dandelion Jelly has a unique sweet taste, but to begin with, you have to begin with the most tedious part and remove all the greens from the petals. You want about four cups of the fluffed up yellow petals and four cups of boiling water, and you want to make a tea out of it and allow it to steep overnight. Once done, you want to strain it and bring to a boil and add a container of pectin. We chose no sugar needed pectin, but added two cups of sugar based on our preference for sweetness. Once the sugar has been dissolved in, you want to mix and add two tablespoons of lemon juice, just like any other jam or jelly, and pour into containers and enjoy. Strengthening my connection to the land, my identity, and my mom. Cattail. Cattails are more than just your swamp grass that you see everywhere. Each part of the cattail can have multiple uses and hopefully this will give you some ideas. Harvesting. When harvesting cattails, it is important to be in the right headspace and have a positive attitude. Depending on what you want your cattails for, there is a different season to be harvested, which will be explained later. Cattail gel. Cattail gel has to be collected in early summer before they get the brown flower. Pulling the stems and peeling back the leaves will reveal the aloe-like gel. This gel can be used as an antifungal or antiseptic that we later stored in the fridge. Cattail stalks. You want to harvest cattail stalks before they grow their brown flower early in the summer. To harvest, you want to gently pull them out to reveal the nice long white stem. Peeling back the first few layers will reveal a nice white root that can be used as either something to be sautéed or as something to be chewed on raw. When you sauté them, they almost turn into a leek-like green onion type of vegetable to be added to any other meal. Cattail flowers. Cattail flowers are the brown shoots you see coming out of the plants later in the summer. That is when they're ready for harvest. Once you've harvested those, you would like to shave off the brown pollen that can be used as a starch or as an additive in pancakes, for example. Cattails are a very versatile plant, so enjoy all the different recipes you can create throughout the summer. Strengthening my connection to the land, my identity, and my mom. That was interesting. Yeah, that was really interesting. I was just thinking, uh, you know, we get dandelions in our lawn every year. Who knew you could uh, use them to turn into a skin lotion, right? That would help with sunburns and stuff like that. So that was really, and I've actually had uh, cattail before uh, when it's been harvested. And yeah, it, it tastes, if you haven't had it before, if you saute it, it tastes very much like uh, leeks. So okay. it's got a it's got a taste similar to to a leek, but yeah, it's one of those things. You have to harvest it very early in the year before that brown uh, flower uh, gets going on it. Otherwise, it, then the taste gets a little bit uh, a little bit strange after that. And horsetail, I, um, I'd never even realized what uh, what you could do with horsetail. Uh, that, yeah. That's some some interesting stuff. That's for sure. Um, my great great grandmother was was uh, like a doctor or a medicine woman that went around and, and uh, delivered babies and stuff way back when. And my grandma, I remember when we used to get sick and we used to have those mustard plasts and they had a, they had a con concoction for everything, right? And mm -hmm. uh, it was, didn't smell good, but it sure worked. That's right. Yeah. Uh, remember you were asking before we went to this segment and those are some amazing videos that we had for that with regards to our viewership yesterday. So asking you shall receive. <laughs> Angelica was very good about getting that to us. So yesterday we had just over 1800 views throughout the day, uh, 1400 views 
on the uh, Fiddle Judge Showcase and 1,400 views for the balance of the day after that. So it was a very good day, I think, overall. Hopefully we'll hit that 10,000 as you're talking about, Sherry. And uh, I had also, uh, there was a couple of people that shared or had questions uh, with regards to some of the stuff that we were talking about with regards to the square dancing and, and um, uh, Folk Fest as well. So May Henderson had sent along that uh, during the three days of Folk Fest that usually happens here mid-August in Saskatoon, uh, they get anywhere, they usually get around 9,000 people that come through the doors of the Friendship Centre over those three days. So yeah, they're and they're getting a chance to sample some first-class uh, Métis cuisine when they come in through there, so that's, that's simply amazing. Uh, and then the other one that we had as well was that uh, Local 11 uh, does provide uh, those uh, jigging and square dancing uh, classes throughout the year as well. So if you're in a local 11 area, they do have those those classes that are available for you as well. So I just wanted to pass that along to everybody that uh, might be listening uh, in at this, uh, this time. Um, for sure. And so May, uh, I know she's a great cook and there's so many great cooks in the Métis world. And uh, that's why we have these beautiful bodies, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, have nice brown <laughs> bodies because we like to cook and we like to eat. Yeah. So, so yeah, May is uh, is one of uh, my relatives also. So, so like I said, we like to cook and we like to eat. So, mm -hmm. we got passed down some great uh, recipes and some great women that used to cook for sure. That's right. You know, it's uh, like the old uh, hearing that or saying that I used to hear all the time, which is, you know, round is a shape too. Yeah, exactly. That's so, true. Yeah, that's true. Round is a shape. There you go. I'm in shape. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's your joke. There you go. There's the joke for the day, right? there. There's my one joke for the day, folks. Enjoy it. Um, yeah. Oh, another thing that did come up, uh, there were some questions about uh, rebroadcasting of some of the events that we're seeing as well. So if you actually go onto the Back to Batosh Days.ca website, there's, the, there's a section on there called Second Stage. And all of the performances uh, that we've had throughout the last few days uh, are on that uh, on that platform. So if you do want to, if you did want to see the, uh, for example, one of the jigging competitions, the fiddling competitions, I think even last night's uh, judges jamboree is on there as well. So if you did want, if you did miss those and you wanted to catch them, you can go onto the backtobatashdays.ca website on the second stage and you can catch those videos there and I believe there's also a YouTube link that somebody managed to find as well that uh, that you can find that uh, there as well. Now for those who are asking about whether the entire program including Sherry and I is uh, recorded on there I don't think so um, but again we can find out for sure like if you really really wanted to hear Sherry and I as well uh, maybe that's something we can talk about for for future virtual ones, but I think, unfortunately, if you're not here to catch us live, we're you're not going to catch us on on uh, on the website. But I, correct me I if think, I'm wrong. I think next year, Chris, we might have to get you at the back to Batosh second stage for the Métis Idol, for the uh, back Batosh Idol, and maybe we'll have to do a duet. There you go. Okay, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. There you go. Heard it here first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. actually, we just got notice here. So if you go to the following address, so it's youtube.com forward slash Cangio, uh, has the entire program there. So I don't know if there's a graphic that we can put up for that or not, Angelica. But uh, yeah. so if you did want to catch the entire show, oh, there we go. Ah, nice. Yeah. So you can catch it at that link. So it's uh, youtube.com forward slash Canadian Geographic. And you can catch the entire rebroadcast uh, pretty much right Thursday on. So, yeah, feel free to go and check that out. Uh, if you really like us, then there you go. <laughs> you have your opportunity to catch us there. So that being said, uh, we now come to the competition portion of uh, our Back to Batash Festival, which is always something that we look forward to as well. So this afternoon, we've got some exceptional competition that you're going to see here right now. So we've got the Junior Fiddle Competition the junior jigging competition, and the square dancing competition, which is something that I always like. A uh, little shout out to my good friend, Kevin C. Sequasis, uh, who's one of the best, uh, and as well as the Warren Ice, Mr. Bear, two of the best uh, square dance guys that I know around there. They're, I know they've got their 
their troop that normally comes out as part of Back to Batash as well. I hope you guys are doing well. Looking forward to hopefully seeing you live and in person next year for Back to Batash with the Square Dance Competition. I think that would be absolutely amazing to see you guys yeah. there. For sure. So get your feet a tapping and your hands a clapping and get ready to watch the junior competitions for the next probably hour and a half. You'll have. Thereabouts, yep. Yeah, you get to sit back and watch the competitions, have your own scorecard and see how you make out with the winners because the winners will be announced tomorrow. So here we go. Enjoy, everybody. My name is Haley Forsyth. I am 10 years old. I live in Dauphin, Manitoba, and I am going to be playing Memories of Paris, Pierogies and Cabbage Roll Jig, and Bumpy Road. I'm 11 years old from Dauphin, Manitoba, and my first song for you today is Black Velvet Waltz. Mm -hmm. 
Chapman. I'm going to be playing Shannon's Waltz, Murray River Jig, and Louis Real Reel. <laughs>
one. Okay, two judges. Hello from Calgary, Canada. I'm Duck from Gilson and I'm 12 years old. Today, I'm going to be playing Volcanic Jig by Natalie McMaster, MacArthur Road by Dave Richardson, and The Lover's Waltz by Jay Ungar. Please enjoy. Your page. Hello, my name is Max Francis. I am nine years old. 
I'm from Victoria, BC, and this is my fiddle teacher, Yvonne Hernandez, on the piano. And I'm going to play the last waltz, Teddy Camp Jig, and Let's Be Real. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs>
enjoyed. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mamer Kusker. I'm nine years old. And today for my walks, I'm going to be playing Ram Knees. For my jig, I'm going to be playing Jig and F. And for my reel, I'm going to be playing Crow Fingers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, if an item or revenue is poured onto a rock and then filled, then I'll be doing three changes of the red ribbon. This is my little brother, Levi Shartan. He's one years old, and today he'll be doing three changes of the Red River Jew. Thank you. 
Sharkton, I'm 11 years old. I'm from Dauphin, Manitoba, and I'm going to be doing three changes of the Red River Dig.
Wow, I'm tired. How about same you, here. Chris? <laughs> yeah, same here. I actually have to shut my eyes for a little bit there, believe it or not. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you know, those square dancers and the little jiggers, they were so cute. And oh, aren't, aren't they, they talented? Aren't yeah. they talented? Oh, my so, goodness. So, so talented. Yeah, those little guys, uh, like the, the last few, about three or four jiggers there, they were so yeah. cute. Uh, those the yeah. little guys were just going. And then I don't know if everybody else caught it, but you pointed this out. We were kind of chatting on it online. Those last two square dance groups were all girls. Yes. Uh, and that was just uh, great to see, just to see that they're uh, able to do what they're, what they're doing. Just a uh, feet of flying and, and giving her. That was awesome. I've seen them dance before and they are, they're, they're great. And, you know, they're always smiling and they're happy to be doing it. And, you know, they have a lot of energy. Yes, Not they do. Not like us. I think I might last maybe one change. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't even make it through one. I know for a fact I wouldn't even make it through one. Well, I know we were doing that uh, river uh, river jigging challenge. So myself and President McCollum got uh, Dean Smith from Prince Albert. Uh, the president was in town when it was on the coldest day. It was huh. freezing and we couldn't even play one minute. And we went and did a really fast jig and that was it. And I was just kicking the snow, basically. <laughs> I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that post on Facebook. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> That's it for my jigging. <laughs> yeah, same here. That would be it for me, too. Yeah. All right, so, on. Well, next we've got our, our final installment of the, uh, pardon me, of the, uh, I'm just running through the Voyager. Voyager. Yeah, yeah, so the I'll Voyager. let you take it away, Sherry. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, yeah, boys, your games. Uh, Clarissa is back, and uh, she's going to be teaching us how to set a trap, and she's also going to do some rope winding. So we'll learn about that, rope winding. I don't know, what could I do with that? Hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we'll just a trap a setting, I might yeah. need to set some traps. <laughs> I don't know if they're that kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kidding, oh. kidding, kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right on. Uh, so with that, I guess we'll uh, let Clarissa teach, and I'll be watching real close. You bet. Okay, so first thing I got to do is I got to make sure all the chains are out of the way, all the... The pans are in, in place underneath the, the opening of the jaws and the, the lip stays there. So we get to prepare before we get to start. So that's how I want them because that's how, how it enables me to do the sets quickly. So we'll say go, I mean one, two, three, go and then timer starts and it's fastest time. When all three are set, that's when the timer stops. So this is, I use gloves so I don't hurt my skin. So I'll open and then I'll keep it open. And then I'll hook up the latch to the pan. There's a little lip there where it fits in the groove. You work from underneath. So if it does snap on you, that it's not gonna catch your fingers. So I got, I got the pressure on the jaws holding this down and then I lift from underneath, underneath the jaws. These are jaws. This is where the trap will catch the animal. And then I let go gently. And this is the same, except it's a little more stronger. So you, what I do is I use my legs to clamp down and then I, oh, sorry, and then I, open the jaws after as I place it down and it's done. Timer will stop. This is a rope winding event also in the Voyager games. I use a glove so I don't get um, rope burn. I put it on the hand that I'm going to be winding and you have a hundred foot blue rope here and it's tied with a loop at the end of it so this is a commercial fisherman practice so um, what I'm going to do what you're supposed to do is Tie this up as fast as you can. The judge says go, and then once you're down to the end of the rope, the timer stops. Fastest time wins. So I'm not going to do it super fast. Just a little example. And it's got to be tight around your arm. And Spread it out so that there wouldn't be very many tangles when it unravels when it ravels onto your arm. And stop. So did you learn something, Sherry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still scratching my I'm still <laughs> Oh, myself, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, thank you oh. so so much, Clarissa. Uh, I believe that was the last of the um, of the Voyager Games videos that we had produced for this. And uh, Clarissa Burns, uh, who I believe is lives in PA, if I'm not mistaken, right, Sherry? Yeah. So thank you so yeah, so does. very yeah. much for those. Uh, those were great little videos, uh, just to kind of go over the Voyager Games, and of course, these are all events that typically happen during Back to the Tosh as well. So. Hopefully next year we'll be able to see her out there, as well as all the other individuals that will be part of that competition as well. For sure. I just want to make mention of the Veterans um, the veterans Monument at Batoche. That's something that um, is very popular. And um, all the names of the vets uh, that fought in 1885, the World War I, World War II, and Korean War. Um, the names are inscribed in the in that monument. So, if ever, anybody ever gets out to Batash, 
um, make sure you stop by that monument and check out and see if you have any family members that fought in any of those wars. Mm -hmm. And um, just want to say it's supper time, uh, and I think there's going to be a break. Yep, I was just going to mention then. that. Yeah, so we'll be taking, pardon me, we'll be taking a short about 35-minute uh, break at this point. Sorry, me again, sorry. Got a glass of Pepsi yep. just before I came on board, so now all of a sudden I got the burps here. But yeah, we'll be taking a break here for about a little over half an hour, uh, but we'll be yep. back here right at 6 o'clock with our intro for our Saturday evening showcase, which will be featuring all the artists that we mentioned previously. So uh, Yeah, so get your dancing shoes. That's right, get your dancing shoes ready and enjoy, uh, Have a, grab, grab yourself a bite to eat, uh, maybe not a Pepsi, but uh, grab mm -hmm. yourself something to drink. And hopefully we'll see you back here all at uh, 6 o'clock. For sure. So have a good supper. See you, everybody.